please welcome our new co-host, Megan McCain. <laughs> such an iconic show, and it's so iconic specifically to be sitting in this chair that Elizabeth made so great. When I was a teenager after 9-11, I was one of those people that called them freedom fries instead of french fries, mm -hmm. like, because the French, France didn't support us in the war in Iraq. I'm not a royal person. I want to show you something. So this is my <laughs> living room in my house, or the entryway of my house. I actually keep pictures of our founding fathers, Washington, Jefferson, Franklin, and Hamilton in my house. <laughs> it feels a little weird to watch something embracing royalty. There you go, Alexander Hamilton, <laughs> respect. It feels weird with our founding fathers watching me watch the royal wedding. Lincoln signed the law that built the first transcontinental railroad. Most people don't even know he was a Republican, right? Does anyone know? So is, you know, know. we okay, want to say he's, we know. he's having, the we Abraham have. The Abraham Lincoln yeah. thing kills me because I, I personally have a pearl necklace with Abraham Lincoln's face on it that I wear. So I'm, I'm going to ask, what do you think is, give me an example of what is politi what political correctness is to you. Oh. I can, huh. I mean, I am a conservative on television. Mm -hmm. Some people recognize me someplace. I go to restaurants, this show, different places on the subway, and people who don't want to talk about being a Republican in Manhattan and major cities will come up to me and say that they're uncomfortable talking about it, but they want to know, they want me to know that they agree with me, but they want to do it privately. Mike Pence left a game, and I understand that you said it was an act of, quote, systemic oppression. So if I left your football game, would you think that I would be behaving in the same way? You're not the vice president of the United States. Fair enough. Okay. In this book, you refer to, or I guess Bannon refers to Nikki Haley as a Jarvanka Republican. Uh, Nikki Haley is a very respected conservative, both in conservative circles and in Trump supporters. She's actually one of these magic unicorns that is respected by both segments. I don't understand why you would include this reductive slogan, and would Bannon and you call me a Jarvanka Republican? You know. I reference you when I'm talking about Democrats who I think understand Red America and what went wrong in the election for Democrats. And I just want to tell you, you have my seal of approval that I think you understand <laughs> what went wrong. There are kids that want to get into the same career as their parents, and I'm totally fine with that as long as it's that kid's dream, you know, as opposed to just modeling off of their parents' dream. If it's if it's, and then I also think, what parent doesn't want to help their this kid? This is the question I have right? for both of you. Okay, so I to, I, I'm conceding, me? and I'll end you, but you didn't say anything that oh. was like semi throwing shade. What should I have done? Should I not have had a career in politics? It's the only world I've ever you known, should do ever. Exactly what you're like, doing. But, There are certain times when, when you, there is influence, and you should have that influence. If, if your husband is going to tweet something that's mean, um, and you say, you know, sweetheart, that's cyberbullying, you know, and can you look at it this way? That kind of influence, I think, is really important in a marriage. But why would you in a marriage to someone who would do that? But there are people that do it. You want to ask me <laughs> there are people that do it. And I, I, I think that when you have your partner's ear, when you have that sort of influence, that's the, the hallmark of a healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. Are you saying I don't have a healthy relationship because Ben and <laughs> no. I don't control no. each other's Twitter accounts? I'm, 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 I'm not talking about you personally. She says she shot him in self-defense. As he was running down the stairs, she shot him in the back of the leg. <laughs> so just real quick, I know someone through someone that this happened to. Um, I personally am really good family friends. A really good family friend of mine married a Miss South Carolina, and they met working on my dad's campaign. Well, can I just say, yeah. the woman in that photo is my friend. Yeah. Can I yeah. just say something yeah. really quick? Johnny Joey is a friend of mine. This is a little bit of a tricky situation for me. Essie Cup is one of my best friends in the entire world. But she says she's afraid. What else is she afraid well, of? Well, first of all, can we give it up to Ross Matthews, who, by the way, is a friend of mine? <laughs> There's a newscaster, uh, she's a weather person, Janice Dean, and uh, she was... She's one of my best friends, just yeah. for the record. Yeah. Didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... What is no, she talking about friendship-wise, though? Because there are some people that are like, oh, they're my friend, they're my friend, they're my friend. I am 
very guarded. I'm very mafia about the people I keep close to me. My friends are very, very tight and loyal, and we call each other ride or die. I don't make friends easily, and the people I'm close to are very, very close to me. Your father was working long and hard with me and others for a comprehensive immigration reform bill. I know where his heart is, and it isn't with the expressions uh, that were given to us by President Trump. Yes, and with all due respect, I know where the heart of people like Tom Cotton is. I don't, I don't think we're ever going to win him over. I think Jesus speaks to me every morning. I understand that DACA is a very emotional issue at this point, but most Republicans are on my side on this one, Anna. And I just don't, I, it's really difficult for me to understand sometimes wh why you still consider yourself because a Republican. Because I'm a Hispanic immigrant Latina. Because I, I was rocking this country when I was eight years old. Because my parents fled communism. And it was not my decision to come here. I came spending, here through no decision though. of my own. I came here through no fault of my own. Had my parents not had visas, had my parents not had the resources to hire lawyers, I would be a Dream Act kid too. That's why this is perfect. <laughs> It's super simple. He doesn't speak like a politician. He doesn't seem scripted. What does he speak like? He speaks, I think he speaks like the average, <laughs> the average American who is sick of being told what to do. I mean, the analysis of Donald I Trump's language and how he... I think the average American speaks much better than Donald Trump does, honestly. <laughs> do you have a non-disclosure agreement? Do I? You can't say whether you have a non-disclosure agreement, but if you didn't have a non-disclosure agreement, you most certainly could say, I don't have a non-disclosure agreement, yes? You're so smart, Jimmy. Thank you very much. I consider myself a semi-intelligent person. I have no idea what she's saying in that clip. I, I don't know if she had an affair or not. And, and I will say, I, I saw something that your father, a statement that your father issued, and he had it just right. He said, our nation's elected officials must stop looking at the investigation through the warp lens of politics and manufacturing partisan sideshows. If we continue to undermine our own rule of law, we are doing Putin's job for him. And that is why... That is why um, your father has it just right. Well, we are politicizing all, the FBI. My the father FBI isn't politicized. No man speaks for me, neither my husband or my father. Start with that. But this is the and ultimate this is a breakdown of democracy and the humor and levity surrounding it on both sides. And by the way, I would like to say that there's a quote that wait, just wait, came wait, out. Wait, 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 wait. Let's second. not talk can about I, both sides. Can I please finish? Well, no, no, no. Let's not talk about both sides. I Let's just talk said about Hillary what's Clinton happening today. And the dossier. Hillary, Hillary Clinton, Clinton the is not the president, and Hillary Clinton wasn't just indicted. No. no. Do you know what? No. Do you know what? No. I was actually, you know what? I'm trying to give you guys insight because I actually know a lot. We don't about need Paul insight Manafort. into Hillary Clinton. Let her talk. Let her talk. I okay. Hear. You don't need any. You don't need any insight. No, Megan, for me. I want to hear. Reportedly, <laughs> Chief of Staff John Kelly tried to keep Omarosa from Donald, but now he may be taking the fall for the Rob Porter domestic abuse scandal. Mm -hmm. Kelly says that he was shocked, mm. shocked, I tell you, when he saw photographs of the abuse. We but the White House knew the FBI held up Porter security clearance over this. Be a long time ago, this happened. The, the, white, uh, the, the FBI white said we, he doesn't have security co uh, clearance because he uh, may, may have abused these women. Mm -hmm. But why is Kelly so shocked? Shocked, well, I we tell We shouldn't you. make levity All of, of this. Sudden. We're talking about the abuse of a woman. I mean, look at that photo. Two. We should not talking be laughing about Kelly. or making We're talking, talking about, about Kelly. We're like, not talking about one abuse right now. Don't say something one like that. Allergic like, to we are laughing and making We are laughing at him being shocked. It's not. It's very serious. Well, look, and as a Republican, I am offended. As a Democrat, I'm offended by Republicans. <laughs> you know what? How is the Trump administration a values-driven administration? I mean, we have... talking about being values in a lot of times. It's in reference to being pro-life, which see I assume those, you said I don't you were see, at one I don't point see time the values of that administration show. with yeah, Rob Porter beating, beating... I know, but val, val, in the political term of what it means is mm -hmm. being valuing life. That is a... It is an old term that's been used no, in politics. No, no, Megan, start that's not with true. With the Trump administration. Values-driven means not only being pro-life, it means being pro um, uh, Marriage. It means being pro having good pro values. It means pro, pro compassion, service. pro empathy. You know exactly, pro empathy. There's so many things it's that go into It's not only about uh, value pro life. life. And the bottom line is, this administration is not a values driven administration. Oh we are also we are missing the main point. We have soldiers that are dying waiting for health care at the VA. Yeah. In yeah. line, right. there are so many issues. PTSD is a raging yeah. problem yeah. with millennial veterans. But we, that's what I would like to use this moment to talk about, Joy. Okay. I, I would agree. like to stay. But you need no, to talk I would like to, him. to stay away from the anger towards Trump, I understand that what he did right now, I am having a very hard time with it, like I told you. It is very hard for me. They would like, yeah, because I can't hear it. They would like me to say this, just to be clear, 
I in no way was advocating violence towards the president. I just want to clarify that. Of course you were. <laughs> of course you were. Of course not. No. Because in this day, in this day and age. Well, you, you can't Everything think is advocating. You, you said, but, Jeff, him, you uh, said Kate, why hasn't it someone taken be, him out yeah. back? That's a threat to our president. Yeah. yeah. But the fact that now he is admitting that they have this relationship yeah. in reference to Stormy Daniels, I mean, and I you think... You know, today is Melania's birthday. Obvious. Happy birthday, Melania. I know. I know. That was necessary. Come on. That's so uh, mean. Yeah. We what talked was mean about it? Because, because... What was mean said, about it, Megan? Tell me her, what was mean. You think that was appropriate? Yesterday, we all talked about how we collectively <coughs> like Melania. I do like her. Hard thing. So it's you're, a, you're making a, fun of her pain. I'm not making fun of her. You are. Are you making fun of her? You know what? just what you just did. You have no sense of humor. Oh, That's please. your problem. It's not that I don't have a sense of humor. It's because I feel bad for our first lady and all this, which we I thought covered yesterday. I, think, well, I mean, I feel bad that, that like she a... married this guy that's doing this to her. I, I, that, that's that's yeah, where I'm at. That's where I'm at. I mean. You know, it, it's, then I, I don't... Then we should take back what we said yesterday, because I thought yesterday we all said that we had a soft spot for her and we felt bad for her, so we should just well, be what, honest. I think what Joy is saying is, just, like, it's sad that it's her birthday and you're, like, this is what and everyone's and talking about. And it's about yeah. him and what a jerk he is. He is yes. a jerk, but I think to, like, point out, happy birthday, Melania, your life totally blows. We're going to talk about it on national television. Mm -hmm. She's aware how bad this is. I wish she would understand who the target of my jokes is. <laughs> that, well, that the audience, didn't, right over the audience didn't laugh either. I mean, they, well, they responded a in a... Maybe. Okay. So what? So sue me. Send okay, me so jail. here's the deal. <laughs> and I just think that there are some dinners in Washington, D.C., the Gridiron Dinner, the Alfalfa Club Dinner, that truly are about celebrating journalism and the work that journalists and political commentators do. This one is, do. too. Would you this say, one are is, you, too. Are, are, you, are, you, are you a journalist? I you consider just, myself. Are, I have okay, a journalism so degree. I was just asking. I consider myself I was just a journalist. Asking. Absolutely. I'm just asking. I understand what you're saying, Megan. By the way, by the way, I would like to say... The pause line for what, I mean, again, like, I just feel like sometimes you just want to line up conservatives and throw grapefruits at us. Trey Gowdy's stepping down. From the truth down. and from the Mueller investigation. Trey Gowdy is stepping down. He's not going to be in office anymore. He's I not wish worried he would about step anything. Down. He is. You got your wish. Yeah. Oh, but I please, think, with the clapping, he's one of the good ones. I think that no, he's not. He yes, he clap. is. He's, no, I mean, he's this not. is the problem. You don't like it either. I don't no. like it just because, again, a lot of people died in a really horrific way. And I, I don't like civil right or, excuse me, civil war. I will say that. Uh, the, uh, my understanding, and I'm not a lawyer, is that it's a pause so we can vet people more accurately mm -hmm. before they come mm -hmm. into this country. You're not banning people from well, coming no. into the country you completely. Are, you are right. also banning. But when people are coming They're into the airport, are that. they automatically sent back now? Yeah. Well, that's so there's, 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 people in the, there's people in the audience shaking their head no. So Is there are a lot of people that have conservative ideals that say, at what point am I giving up my humanity yeah, and for we'll this? Right. Give up because power. The that's fact right. Is, no, but, right. but there is. So, I'm sorry. Please let me Sarah. finish. I no, have to let me finish segment. because that talk Trump? that what I was just saying about Walmart I'm just people. Trying to say I told you, you need the well, to go to break if you're all talking. Because, well, because we're sitting if you're here. you're all talking at once, I'm going to go to break. I'm going to give you the last word. That's go why ahead. we needed the bell. We don't need the bell. Shut up with the bell. <laughs> I don't understand. Stop it with the bell. Go ahead. Megan. I don't understand why we're not trying to understand. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. You know what? Forget it. There's when you are living in a tiny town in America and you're coal mine or steel mine went under and opiate addiction is raging in your town and there is no hope for your kids and you can't pay your insurance and you can't pay your college. It sounds like college. black people. But I'm trying to, again, <laughs> we had... You know, I, you know, I'm just, I don't, again, I don't okay. mean that. I, I don't what? mean that in a, in a, Whoopi, in a crazy way. I, I adore way. you, as you know. Yes. But that was a cheap shot. No, I'm trying to explain. I'm, I'm, oh, oh, wait. No, I'm now, trying oh, no, to no, explain. No, no, no. I know you what you're trying to do. I get it. And that's why I said it with a smile because... People, poor people I are everywhere. There's not just race white. As well. yes. Yes. I'm trying to explain. I have been to these places. I'm so have right I, America. Megan. We've I both know. been there. We know. We know. That. This makes my head explode, which, by the way, I hope Democrats do run a democratic socialist. Do you hope that just, we win? Do you win? Uh, the Democrats uh, no, because I think Trump? you'll lose spectacularly, and then I will look forward to election night when I finally get to tell everybody I told you so if you end up running a radical. Problem with socialism, in the words of Margaret Thatcher, at a certain point you run out of spending other people's money. Venezuela, one of the richest countries <coughs> in the world in the 70s. Now, the average Venezuelan has lost 24 pounds because they're starving to death. 90% of I the country to, like, is living in poverty. I think she's talking more about Scandinavia than Venezuela. I, but I'm sorry. I need, this is what I need from her. 
Name one country that socialism has ever worked, and also every Sweden. every democratic socialist Copenhagen. who is going um, on TV Denmark. saying that it's good Norway. needs to start paying Finland. 90 percent in taxes Iceland. on your tax uh, form. No, on your tax name. form. On your tax form, I think you should start paying the amount of taxes that every socialist in this country thinks you need to. Because if you think the government is so good at okay. spending money, look at the VA. Oh, no, no because it is dangerous. I just told you several countries that do it. I'm sorry. Hold on a minute. Hold on. Everybody. Name one country that socialism has ever worked, and also every Sweden. every name one country that socialism has ever worked, Denmark. saying that it's good. Name one country that socialism has ever worked. Needs to start paying. Name one country that socialism has ever worked. Ninety percent. Name one country that socialism has ever worked. Tax Iceland. On your comedian Sasha Baron Cohen came out swinging on the premiere of his new series, Who Is America, where he went undercover to get congressmen to support a program to give guns to toddlers. <laughs> Seeing these folks who are so official and you know mm -hmm. have so much protocol get punked, which is basically what happened, <laughs> is absolutely hilarious. But he also, I mean, he also, you know, he also got people like Dick Cheney. He got Dick Cheney did, to yeah. sign a Bernie waterboarding Sanders. hit. He got Sarah Palin. Bernie Sanders. He got left Bernie yeah, Sanders. Bernie. Hi, I'm Bill and Wayne Ruddock uh, from TruthLibrary.org, and I'm here in Washington with Bernard Sanders. You have 199. You just move over the nines. You have the 99% or in the 1%. Billy, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I really don't. He got Sarah Palin. Bernie Sanders. He got left Bernie yeah, Sanders. Bernie. He People want to be able to have a choice. I don't understand why you can't do it, uh, why you can't say all of it. I don't understand why I have to do one thing and not the other. I am not going to be told how to greet people. If I'm comfortable saying happy holidays because I'm not sure, or I say Merry Christmas to people I know are Christians, you know, it's, it's it should war. be, it's not a war. Yeah. It's me trying to figure out what I want to do. But you can't tell me what I should be doing. You can't tell me I'm at war with you because but I'm not saying Merry Christmas. But to when, counter uh, that, you also mm -hmm. can't tell someone that they can't say Merry Christmas and they have to say Happy Holidays. But no one, not but that, that thing, no one, no one has said you that. Can't, no you one has I think, I believe that was, you just said that earlier in this segment. I believe I you said, that you you said it's say more inclusive. Christmas. Well, Whoopi no. was saying some, she likes to say Happy Holidays. Yeah, <laughs> some because say I don't more know. Inclusive, okay, so I think the war on Christmas is a real thing that's going on in our culture because we're having a debate about it on this table. So he's brilliant to do it right now. I'm no snowflake Daisy. Yeah. Like, I can I can hang. I have reported quite a few people to Twitter in the past few days. Right. I am not a snowflake. I'm not someone that takes, I'm super sensitive towards things.